In this video, you're going to learn about scientific studies with regard to radio silence and time with relationship, especially when it comes to getting back with your ex. You're going to learn also if you're doing the right things <laughs> at the moment or not. Let's get to it before I move on to remind you the, to subscribe. It would make my day and make me smile and I love to smile. <laughs> <laughs> we are growing and it's uh, totally anonymous. You get a notification anytime I post a new video. Comment, share your stories, ask me your questions in the comment section. I'm more than happy to reply to everyone. And take the quiz if you want to know if you have any chance to get back with your ex. It's totally free. It takes two minutes. I left the link in the first comment of the video. So, Let's talk about this pie. It could be a pie that I baked, but <laughs> it is not. I took it from the internet. Um, when sometimes we think that in order to cook this pie, um, it, the recipe says it's 45 minutes uh, at 200 degrees or whatever. And you say, OK, no, but uh, I don't want to wait 40 minutes. So I'm going to do it in um, 10 minutes for at 800 degrees, you end up having a burnt pie. Just to help you understand that time is important. Sometimes you don't, you shouldn't try to skip step or to use shortcuts. Because in a lot of things in life, like baking, like watering a plant, time is essential. So let's look at the first thing, the power of smile on emotional state. What did you say when you split up? I'm pretty sure it was a nasty, uh, nasty, or maybe it was not nasty. Maybe it was very distant. No words were exchanged. Try to protect yourself on that day when you broke up. Were you upset? Uh, was your ex angry? What, what were the words that was used? The idea is that you want to get back to that calm and neutral position. That day was an awful day. I can assume that's how you see it right now. What you have to do is to, when you go back to that day, try to figure out how to get to that state when you start a relationship, when it's calm, when everything is normal, when everything is easy. American movies. American movies, it's always, always extreme because when you write a movie, it needs to be extreme. It needs to be he would buy a castle and he would uh, jump from a bridge or things like that. And then they will hate each other. They will try to kill each other, <laughs> things like that. Very extreme. But in real life, it doesn't work like that. So the first example is maybe you, you, you left each other uh, through a single argument. Other example is that it's a series of crescendo arguments. So maybe through times or weeks, you had arguments. In both cases, time will fix everything because we're gonna as you, this anger and all this nastiness i don't know if it's a word increases is increases <laughs> increases is the um, only time will let things go down a little bit like when you cook a, uh, uh, a pie and you want the pie to cool down there's one way to do it you let it cool <laughs> you let it cool you let it cool and then it's going to be easier to eat. So look whether your example one or two, but the idea is in both cases, time will fix everything. Time allows you to be sure because now we're going to look into your ex's mind. Your ex didn't wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to wake up with Brad. It took weeks. It took months, even years. So you have to understand that it was very much a slow construction in their mind. They had this idea, and I'm going to detail this in the next slide. Maybe just before the breakup, your ex said to himself or herself, maybe it will work out. Okay, there's something I don't like about us together, but maybe it's going to work. And they think, and it's going to be, I just need a break. And then they had a lot of questions, whether you're the right person. They had some doubt whether it was coming from them. Maybe it's just not an argument, maybe it's deeper than that. And gradually they'll see the feelings changing, evolving. And if it's persistent, I leave. This is the construction of people deciding to break up with other people, with their partner. I can guarantee your ex went through exactly the same phase. 
exactly the same phase. There's that construction day after day, weeks after weeks, and they try to see whether that's the right assumption, whether they're not sure, whether they, their gut feel is confirming or not. It took a long time to leave, and it will take a long time to come back. This is really important. If it took them six months to really make that decision, they're not going to come back in one week. Think about it. So time, you need time for them to miss you. Sometimes they don't want to hurt yourself by coming too soon. So on this one is, they're not sure. Nobody's sure when they break up. Um, they have this gut feel, they feel that it's not working, they take that decision, but they're not sure. They're like in 75 to 80% of the case, nobody is sure when they decide to break up with, um, with, a, with a partner. And so when they come back, if they come back too soon, they'll feel that they're not ready yet. And therefore, if they come back too soon, they feel that they could hurt you because they're not, as they're not 100% sure, they're like, okay, I'll give it a try, but I'm not so sure. And so they don't want to do that because at the end of the day, they loved you, they had feelings for you. I think they are still believe they still love you and they still have feelings for you, actually. And they don't want to hurt you. And so it's very mature for them. So your ex still has affection for you. You have to understand that. But they just don't want to hurt you. Especially if you had a hard time during the breakup. Especially if you... If they looked at uh, how you reacted during this breakup and you really felt really bad and you reacted really badly, would they take the risk of coming back if they're not 100% sure? They'll think, okay, I'm maybe 60% sure, but is that, would I risk getting back with him or her and make him suffer again? Well, no, I need to move on. So these are kind of the reflections that coming on going on in their, in their mind. So you don't leave the relationship immediately. The key takeaways of this one is you don't leave relationship immediately. It takes a lot of time and therefore you don't come back immediately in a relationship. It is the same psychological mechanism. So you have to understand, and I know it's hard, when you've been together for years, you're not going to get back together in two weeks. It's never going to work like that. So time is so, so essential. It's crucial in that sense. Every second of radio silence is a little bit of missing. Give them the experience, the taste of being alone, the taste of missing you. Also, time has the ability to erase the mistakes, to keep only good memories. Um, think of yourself when you were at, uh, in high school, for example, and you had like boring classes. On that day, you were like, oh my God. <laughs> I hate this teacher, or I hate this class, I want to go out and... And now when you reflect back, I'm pretty sure you have a different image of that class. Maybe you just remember the, the good times you were spending with your mates, um, or you know, the things we were doing at school, but not necessarily that class. You sort of erased, I'm pretty sure you don't remember the face or the name of your teacher. This is exactly the same with your relationship. Your ex with time will only remember good memories. Of course, they remember some of the bad things, but overall, our brain is hardwired to remove 80 to 90% of the bad or useless memories to only the, keep the good ones. It's evolution, <laughs> basically. After a breakup, they thought they were better than you. I know you don't really like to hear that, but that's the case. Um, they decided to break up, hence they are better than you. They know what to do, they make action. Having a, they think that having a better relationship with another person. Um, and the thing is, time will show them that the grass is not greener elsewhere. And it is often on yourself that you have to work. The answer is not elsewhere, it's yourself. When they'll be in the situation to compare their grass <laughs> to your grass in a way, they need to look at your grass to be greener than where they are, right? It's a stupid image, but you get what I want to say. Good memories will come back. So on the one end, you have to work on yourself, work on your grass, <laughs> make it green, paint it, whatever you do. And also they're going to look at their grass and feel like, oh, actually, this is greener. And I felt like all the great memories I had in that garden and things like that. I don't know why I'm losing this image of grass, but anyway, you, you got what I... <laughs> got my point. 
Um, they think of you, number five, of course they think of you. As I said, they took months and months to break up with you. They won't forget you from one day to another. So remember, it's so important. Then at night when they go to bed, they think of you. In the morning when they have their coffee, they think of you. They, I'm pretty sure they have this urge to call you, but they don't want to do it. And every day they miss you a little more. And they have this FOMO, this fear of missing out, because as you're not around, they don't know exactly what is going on in your life. They don't know exactly what they're missing out. Especially if you have an exciting life, they'll be like, they really, really experience that FOMO. And I love this expression, experience is a candle that only lights the one who carries it. So you have to let them learn by doing, learn by experience. It's the only way we actually, human beings learn. It's not the only one, but it's the best way to learn something. If you want to learn to ski, if you want to learn to play tennis, it's not by watching videos, it's not by uh, reading books about it. You have to go on the slopes, grab your skis and ski. <laughs> so you have them to experience this really in their, um, in their body, in their feelings, in their day-to-day -day life. Number six, curiosity. I don't know if you know this box, it's the little prince. The little prince asked the, um, I don't remember who he asked, but he asked uh, to draw a ship and uh, he draws different ships and at the end say, I'm not happy with those ships. So at the end he decides to draw a box and say, your ship is inside. <laughs> <laughs> this is curiosity. You just want to open the box to see how the sheep, the sheep looks like. It is the same in relationship. You have to create that box. Maybe you have a few holes in it so they can look a little bit inside, but that's exactly what you have to do. And it's going to rise each day. Our brain are so hardwired to learn to know more. We are um, animals, very curious animals. That's how we grew up in the jungle is how to find stuff when we were hunters and gatherers so it is really part of a reptilian brain is to discover and learn new things so if you are mysterious if you don't show all your cards uh, like a good poker player you would grow that attraction and grow that curiosity in their mind and it's going to be rising each day in their daily life then the realization <laughs> We get back together for good, but I know I must not leave this person. I, if I don't do something, I lose her forever. This is what they're going to think after that radio silence, because they're going to have this phase of, okay, I'm super happy being alone. I can do whatever I want. And then like, okay, I'm going to test things. Then the grass actually is not that green. And actually the, uh, my ex seems like uh, having good fun. He's very excited. I actually had great memories. And then they're like, in the freak out mode, the realization mode. We need to get back together. Now I'm 100% sure, I'm 110% sure. This is how it's gonna work. So they have to understand that if they don't do something, they lose them forever. And again, in terms of psychological studies around that, people are more driven to act when they feel that they are losing something than when they think that they're gonna earn something. I'm gonna actually post a link in the comment of the video, it's very interesting. If they think that they lose you forever, then this is what will trigger them to act. If they think they're gonna lose you forever and you are a great person, you're reminding them of great memories, of course they're gonna act. This is what's gonna happen. So the key takeaway, it takes discipline. I know it's hard, I know it's very easy for me to tell you to start a radio silence, but take discipline, get a sidekick, get your best friend, ask myself, to be accountable, stick to your radio silence. This stuff works. Otherwise, I wouldn't do videos about it. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that your ex still thinks about you. You have to believe in yourself because you were in love before. They loved you. They still love you. So there's no reason they're not going to go back with you if you work on yourself. And let time pass, even when it's difficult. And I know it's hard, but it will get better. Trust me. Take care of yourself. Bye.